Hello, everyone. Welcome to our engineering virtual visit today. We're just going to wait a few moments just so everyone can hop on and then we will get started. All right. While everyone continues to hop on, we'll get started with our engineering virtual visit today. So before I begin, I just wanna introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am a recent graduate of Berkeley. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I studied architecture while I was at Berkeley. And I'm from the Bay Area, so I've been around here for quite a while. Um, just before we get started with the virtual visit, I wanted to take a few moments to thank you all for tuning in today to watch our virtual visit, especially because of everything that's happening in the world right now. We as a community really want you to know that we acknowledge and recognize the challenges and pain stemming from everything going on, and we do stand with you. And I did want to invite you to read our chancellor's message on news.berkeley.edu to learn more about how we as a community are responding, what we stand for, and how we're taking action. So again, thank you so much for being here, and we will get started with our virtual visit. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. This virtual engineering visit is a 40 to 45 minute presentation, an hour long visit in total. So feel free to type any questions that you have in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. You'll notice that the chat is disabled, so anything you want us to see, just send it through that Q&A. And then we also will have a few polls that we'll send out throughout the presentation um, just to get a better idea of who we're talking to today, where you're, you come from, things like that. And then this session will be recorded, but there's a different engineering virtual visit available on our website. If you go to visit.berkeley.edu, you can rewatch any of the information that you've missed um, today. So this is an engineering overview, which means that there's different material than our regular virtual visit. So if you're interested in learning more information about the general campus, health and safety, student life, academics, other than engineering, you can check that out on our website. But this one will be sp specifically about engineering academics and what you can get involved in as an engineering student. Um, and it is from the student perspective, which means that there's no admissions or financial aid info. But if you do have questions about that, we can refer you to the right place. And you can also register for an admission session on their website separately. And then lastly, we will end with a live Q&A where we will do our best to answer any of the questions that you've sent in throughout the presentation. So with that, I will pass you along to our two ambassadors today. We have Casey and Tina, take it away. Cool, thank you, Sarah. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to UC Berkeley um, Engineering Tour. I'll be one of your ambassadors for the day. My name is Casey. I use the pronouns he, him, his. I'm originally from Long Beach, California, which is right down south next to LA. Um, I'm a rising senior majoring in chemistry. So it's not engineering, but I still know a lot of engineering things. A lot of my friends are engineers, so I know a lot of stuff about it. And some of my involvement on campus, besides being a campus ambassador, I'm also part of the UC Rally Committee. That's like a spirit organization on campus. Love it, love the spirit, love it all. I have a shirt that says Rallycom, I'm just realizing. So love Rallycom. Um, and then besides that, I'm also part of Cal Student Philanthropy. So philanthropy. Um, and then I am sports, just going out, working out and having fun with friends, whether or not we win or lose. It's, always having fun. That's a little bit about me. Cool. Hi guys, my name's Tina. I use the She Series and I'm from a small suburb of Los Angeles, California and I'm a rising sophomore. My majors are electrical engineering, computer science, and business administration under the Management, Entrepreneurship, and Technology program, also known as MAT. Have any questions, put them in the Q&A. Some things I'm involved in here at Berkeley are Society of Women Engineers. I'm an intern at a Berkeley Skydeck startup, and I'm also a part of the ASUC, which is the Associated Students of the University of California, which is the student government here at Berkeley. So. Okay, so guys, thank you for being so flexible and uh, meeting us here virtually for this engineering visit. Uh, just a little overview about Berkeley. Here we see our D1 football team warming up, getting ready to snatch that axe, which is the axe we get if we win against Stanford, which we currently have. Casey could talk more about that. There's also the Hurston Mon <laughs> Memorial Mining Building, which I believe is the most beautiful building on campus on screen right there. It is home to our material science engineering department. Also through the trees here, you could see our beautiful bell and clock tower, the Campanile, which stands at 307 feet, fun fact. You can also see a few, uh, a few students chilling on Memorial Blade, which is this big patch of grass we have around the middle of the campus. And you just see a lot of students playing Frisbee, hanging out, sleeping, hammocking, a bunch of stuff. Also, this year marks the 150th year that women have been admitted into UC Berkeley. So it's 150 years of women at Berkeley, which is 
incredible. Also, a few years ago in 2018, 150 years of light, which it me, which marks the 150 year anniversary of Berkeley itself. So moving on. Okay, so this is our agenda. Just a little overview about where we're going today. There's the overview of Berkeley. There's the academic overview engineering specific information there's the student life resources labs makerspace research legacy and stuff like that so with that let's get right in okay everyone so uh, first up on the docket is history and establishment so this is a little bit about the history of cal we were founded back in 1868 so like um, tina said back in 2018 that's when we turned 150 now we're 153 and we're admitting women and 50 years of admitting women um, and uh, our name originally was University of California, and then later on, the nine other nine undergraduate colleges came to be. And so, we went from being just University of California to UC Berkeley. Um, also, we go by Cal because we were the very first of the nine undergraduates. Um, you can try to call us UCB. We don't really respond to it, but you know, you can try. Um, and then our mascot is the golden bear. On some some of the following slides, you'll see our mascot. His name is actually Oski. He's a lot more of a cuddly bear than a ferocious bear. Weird bear, all those things. I wouldn't say ferocious, but weird, cuddly, all those words. Um, and then our campus size, so we have just over 31,000 undergraduate students. And of that, just shy of four grand of them are engineers. And just shy of 12,000 um, are graduates. And of, the, and of those um, 12,000 graduates, just over 2,000 of them are engineers. So there's a sizable chunk of engineers here on, at Berkeley. Okay. Awesome, thank you for that, Casey. So we have five undergraduate college here, one of which is our College of Engineering. There's also our College of Chemistry, which does house our chemical engineering major. And there's the College of Letters and Sciences, the Rouser College of Natural Resources, and the College of Environmental Design. So uh, for our College of Engineering and our College of Chemistry too, you apply directly into the college, meaning that you get the major. If you get accepted, you are automatically a part of the major that you applied into. And um, don't worry, don't worry too much. If you do find out you are interested in something else, you can transfer. However, transferring into the College of Chemistry or the College of Engineering is a little harder and a little tougher. And if you do want to be part of electrical engineering and computer science, it is nearly impossible to transfer into it. So just a little things to think about while you're making a decision. Moving on. Yeah, just to say what Tina said, um, it is kind of hard to transfer into the two colleges, um, especially engineering and chemistry. But I want to say that I transferred to College of Chemistry and it's hard, but not impossible. Just get that in mind. But electrical engineering and computer science, that is impossible. Um, you know, try to be a little uplifting. Um, but so now here I can talk a little bit about the overview of the College of Chemistry. So I know they have like their mission statement right there. Transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. And uh, I mean, you can read all the, all the um, uh, nice little overview of the College of Engineering. But the way that I would describe the College of Engineering is that we are ranked number three in the world for engineering. And when you come here, you can definitely feel it. Um, while you're on campus, you can definitely feel you are getting like the um, top notch education and like with all the great faculty and professors and everyone. And I mean, just you, you go put in a lot of work to get to Berkeley and you're going to continue putting in that work in the College of Engineering, but not in like a stressful way, just kind of a proud, I mean, I would say a proud to be here kind of way. Um, but so that's kind of like a brief overview of College of Engineering. And as you can see, culture and community, change makers, challenging the status quo, entrepreneurship. A lot of students come here, kind of want to change the world or at least kind of um, add to it, I would say. And then the community, everyone's compassionate and passionate about what they do with spirit and pride. I mean, you see, I'm all about Cal spirit, but students are about what they're majoring, about you know, all their other clubs. Um, I know about um, the help, blah, 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 words. Um, I'm helping fight for the environment. Um, I know there's plenty, anything they can get involved in. They can do that all on campus or off campus, as well as be, um, being really smart and just taking, getting a top-notch education. So that's a brief overview of the college. Awesome. So just a little overview of the College of Engineering. We do have 11 majors. All the majors are ranked top nine globally, which is amazing. You can also switch between the majors. However, if you do want to switch into electrical engineering and computer science, it is very hard to. Um, also, some postgraduate paths that we have. A lot of students go into industry. However, some do go to grad school and some do go into research. And as you can see here with our beautiful pie chart, the biggest major is electro engineering and computer science with 
nearly half of the students in engineering being in that, uh, followed closely, not too closely, by mechanical engineering and bioengineering and then civil and environmental engineering and then industrial <laughs> engineering operations research. And as you can see, our smallest engineering is uh, nuclear engineering with um, a joint with a few students in the joint majors. Moving on. So sorry for the awkward silence. I had a problem with my mouse. Yay. Um, but so you just saw a poll pop up on your screen about what you're, were you interested in. So just as Tina mentioned about all the majors we have here at Berkeley, now you can kind of tell me, show us what you are interested in. Um, but so while you guys are clicking away at that, I'll talk about the four or the three majors listed on the screen. One of them is engineering undeclared. So you can come into Berkeley as an undeclared in the engineering, in the College of Engineering. Um, I, it's very, very um, sought after major because when you come here after your fourth semester or by your first semester, you could do it after your first, after your second or third, but by your fourth semester, you will, de you will declare an engineering major. And with that, you get to go into any one of the engineering um, departments. So if you come here and say, well, you know what, I want to do electrical engineering computer science, you can declare that and jump into it. So that because you have this free range of what you want to pick, it's very sought after. And as, you can, as I can see, a lot of you guys actually are interested in electrical engineering and computer sciences. Um, but I see that six of you are chemical engineers. So yay, chemistry. Um, so yeah, love that. And also the rest of you. I also love all of you too. So hearts all around. Um, but yeah, so yeah. So I'm glad you guys um, filled out that form and are interested in all of that. And also electrical engineering. Um, no, oh my God. Undeclared in engineering. Um, so with that, you get to kind of jump into any one of the majors. You also take introductory seminars about each one. So you kind of get a little taste of each one before you declare. Then we have nuclear engineering. So nuclear engineering, um, you, do, you get a lot of research and development along the, within the major. And where you kind of learn about the energy and radiation. Um, one cool thing about electrical engineering is you kind of learn about the creating like electrical power from nuclear, um, um, or from nuclear, creating electrical power from it. Yes. Um, also, you can learn about like shipping um, uh, nuclear waste or kind of like creating like a um, medical isotopes or just anything that would be kind of nuclear, you kind of work on it. I'm kind of throwing out words out there, but that's kind of the kind of way I just thought of it was just like um, creating power from it and shipping it basically. Um, then we have bioengineering, which has, again, research and development and works with biomedicals and information technology. So again, it's just kind of like the cross sections of biology and engineering. You like engineer stuff for biology. Um, so you kind of, again, you kind of put like engineering, uh, um, uh, engineering sciences or engineering, um, I can't think of the word right now. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, and just engineering and procedures to biology. So you can like engineer bacteria to do medical, forgetting my whole spiel at the moment. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but yes, yeah, so you kind of work with bioengineering and, and nuclear engineering. And so these pictures here on the left is Echeverry for nuclear engineering and bottom right is Stanley for bioengineering. Awesome. So now on to industrial engineering and operations research, also known as IOR. They do a lot of complex systems operations and making processes more efficient, effective, efficient, and safe. I tend to think about it with a lot of optimization, and I tend, <laughs> and I tend to think about it working at Disneyland because you have to optimize all those lines and all the people. And I just think it's a really cool major. Also, there's material science and engineering. Uh, they do a lot with desirable material properties and functions and environmental impact, feasibility, and cost. Um, one thing I like to think about is silly putty. I remember one mechan uh, mechanical, one material science and engineering major that I met at Berkeley told me that he actually chose this major because he loved silly putty when he was a little kid and he wanted to bring joy to the world like silly putty. So that's why he entered the major. And that's why. That's what I think about when I think about this major. So moving on. Yep, so moving on, I can now talk to you guys a little bit about civil and environmental engineering. So hopefully I don't um, jump, get twist, tongue tied. I'm already getting tongue tied. But um, so now talking about civil and environmental engineering, I actually had quite a few friends who are in civil and environmental engineering or just civil engineering, um, and they loved it. The way I would describe it is they would get, there's a part of um, a competition team they're a part of called Steel Bridge, where they just make a steel bridge. And the way, and they would get so excited when it only flexes like, three degrees or something when someone stands on it. They're so happy and so excited. So that's kind of what I always say about the civil engineering department is they're all so in love with what they do. They're all, I mean, I use this lovingly. They're also nerds for buildings. So <laughs> that's a little bit about some of civil engineering and also with environmental engineering, sustainability, infrastructure and control systems. So making sure that what we build doesn't have a harmful effect on the environment. On the bottom right corner, you see they're actually collecting data for environmental engineering. So again, we don't like leave too harsh of an impact on the environment, kind of like take 
have a zero impact on the environment. Um, then we have mechanical engineering and mechanical engineering is very much multi, multiple, multidisciplinary. Slow down. I got to slow, slow myself down. It is very much multidisciplinary, uh, meaning that there's just so many different facets you can go into with mechanical engineering. You can work with like robotics or you can work with um, transportation or you can work with um, microsystems, nanosystems. You can just, there's so much you can work with in mechanical engineering. So you kind of, it's one major, but you kind of have a lot of different like subclasses or not subclasses, but you can like pick and choose what you want to do within mechanical engineering, kind of more, or, more or less. And also material and machine design and application. So there actually is a prototype, or like a, uh, I think I would call it a prototype lab or a prototype um, shop where you can go and make prototypes or um, a steel working shop. So you can go and actually make like anything you would need to like help demonstrate something or just to, um, for any projects you can go and help get help building it. And so that was, um, one cool thing with mechanical engineering is you can actually go on mis machine design and actually kind of build machines and kind of help practice with it. Um, and then again, top left is steel bridge, like I was mentioning. Um, bottom left is Echeverry, which is nuclear and mechanical engineering. As same with top right is O'Brien for mechanical and then bottom right, like I already mentioned. My mental. Okay, awesome. So now there's uh, engineering science majors, which is energy engineering, engineering mathematics and statistics, engineering physics, and environmental engineering science with focuses in green technology, energy systems, sciences, math, biology, and physics. So basically, they're a more theoretical approach to engineering than application-based. And that's basically it. You have any questions, put them in the Q&A. Neat, and now jumping to the one that most of you guys are here for, or a sizable chunk of you guys are here for, is electrical engineering and computer science, or EECS. So EECS is a technological problem solving. So there's a lot of problem solving within EECS. You do go to a lot of discussion sections and work in a lot of um, group settings, trying to like work out your code or, I, you know, code. I had two, my two roommates in from uh, my freshman year were both EECS majors. So they knew what they were talking about and like, um, not blockchain, but I'm trying to think of all the different um, coding languages. They would all talk about that, and I'd sit there and go like, hey, H2O, right, plus NaCl, salt water, because chemistry. Um, so yeah, and then come out, again, a lot of collaboration. Again, you're a lot of group projects you'd work on. I'm um, computer-aided design. So again, I mean, the way I would describe it is they make computers do their bidding in electrical engineering. And, so in EECS, they really do know their way around a the computer. They're, they were my tech support my entire freshman year. So um, and then jumping really quickly over to this next slide, it actually describes the differences between EECS and computer science as Berkeley offers both. So EECS is, is within our College of Engineering and it's a direct admission, meaning that when you apply, in, when you apply to Berkeley on the, applica on the um, application, it'll say apply to Berkeley, College of Engineering, um, Electrical Engineering, Computer Science, you check all those off. And if you get in, you then automatically have that major versus with College of Letters and Science, with their um, computer science, you come in as undeclared. And by the end of your sophomore year, or a, approximately that time, you would then declare computer science. So one of them is you get it automatically or once you get in, and the other one is you declare later on. So that's why EECS is a little bit harder to get into versus computer science. They're both difficult, but I mean, if I had to like rank them, I'd be like that. Um, it'd be like EECS and then computer science. And also EECS is more hardware and software integration. So you're both working on coding the computer and actually figuring out what the computer is doing versus computer science is more of just coding, more of just figuring out the, yeah, the, after the computer is already built, this is how it runs, versus EECS is build the computer and then to make it run. And EECS also has um, a fewer breadth courses because it is a, B, a BS. It kind of just focuses ma mainly on the science of it all versus com computer science because it's within the College of Letters and Science. There are seven, it's um, in the College of Letters and Science, there's seven breadths you have to take and in order to graduate. And it's because it has seven breadths and it's more of a diverse array of classes, you kind of get the Bachelor of the Arts with it. Um, Bachelor of the Arts versus Bachelor of the Science, I've heard they do the same thing. Uh, um, mostly people just ask, oh, where, how'd you, what, what's your major and where'd you graduate from? Oh, computer science Berkeley. They don't ask BA versus BS. Um, and then um, EECS also has ethics and specific math and physics requirements, where again, computer science um, doesn't, have, doesn't have as many because it's in the College of Letters of Science and computer science is impacted. So you do have to have a pretty nice GPA and take some pretty poor, poor classes to be able to get into computer science. But besides that, those are just like the nice little comparison of EECS and computer science. Awesome. So some other opportunities we have in the College of Engineering, we do have joint majors and a joint major is basically say you're joint majoring in uh, materials, science and engineering and EECS, right? You do courses from both of the majors. However, it's not a dual major because you don't complete two, two separate majors. It allows you a lot more overlap. So it's a lot easier to do 
to explore both majors. There's also a bunch of minors, such as you could get a minor in EECS and BioE, and I bet a bunch of other engineering too. Um, I know a lot, of, a lot of my engineering friends pursue a minor in EECS just because they kind of want some of that computing coding aspect of it. There's also certificates, which I like to think of as mini minors, and some of them also as a design innovation certificate. There's also the environmental entrepreneurship and technology certificate. There's also the management entrepreneurship and technology program, also known as MET, which I am a part of, and it's, it's a doozy. Uh, basically, you get uh, a double major. You get two, two degrees, one from the College of Engineering and your choice of engineering. I believe you have all of them except for engineering sciences and nuclear engineering and not chemical engineering because that's in the College of Chemistry. Um, and a degree in the Haas School of Business. So two degrees, four years, a lot of work, but worth it. I, at least I think it's worth it. If you have an interest in engineering and business, I do suggest you apply into it. It is a selective program. However, if you don't get into the program, you do get deferred to the regular pool of admissions for the College of Engineering. So it's kind of like having two shots of getting into Berkeley, which, is, <laughs> which doesn't happen for most people. And moving on. Okay. Yep, Speaking. so now we can move on to, oh. So now moving on to my favorite college, I'm a little biased though, is the College of Chemistry. And College of Chemistry is a little, is a little bit smaller than engineering. It only has about a thousand students. And again, you, do, you apply directly into the college. Um, but that means that once you get in, you what if you get into Berkeley into the College of Chemistry, you then have that major, which is great. Um, again, like other colleges you declare later on. And chemistry is ranked number one globally. So engineering is ranked number three globally or ranked number one globally. So got to brag about that. Yay, chemistry. Um, and then there are three majors in the College of Chemistry, chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. So again, if you're looking to meet to major in chemical engineering, even though it's in engineering, it's in the College of Chemistry. The way I think about it is you're doing more chemical things and engineering things during the College of Chemistry, but also the name chemical engineering, chemistry comes first in the name. So it's in the College of Chemistry. If it was engineering of chemistry, we can talk about it, but chemical engineering is the College of Chemistry. Um, and then again, we're ranked number one globally and some cool things about it is we have helped discover 16 elements on the periodic table. And actually we've also um, have been teaching chemistry since before the periodic table. Periodic table came out, I think about 152 years ago and Berkeley is 153 years old. So that's pretty neat. Um, but so some of those um, uh, elements discovered are Berkeley, California and Seabergium. Um, no other school has an element named after them. I think Tennessee has Tennesseeum, but besides that, we have like multiple Berkeley and California. And Seaborgium was a, a Seaborg was a um, professor that worked at Berkeley. So a lot of elements, a lot of really cool things about chemistry. Go chemistry. Cool. Okay, so <laughs> on to some academic stuff or more academic stuff. We have a. Uh, all of the engineering classes, at least that I've been in, have the structure of lecture, section, and lab. And basically section and lab are run by GSI's graduate student instructors and their students, graduate students who are getting their master's or PhD in your respective field. And you learn a lot from them and they kind of just go over what the teacher went over in lecture. So if you have any questions, you can always ask them. Also your GSI's and your professors hold office hours and you could go to office hours for any type of help homework help lecture help professional help research help or you could just go there and get to know your professors a little bit more and it makes a small a bigger school feel smaller there's also class sizes which are dependent on majors if you're an eeks major like me you're probably going to be with in classes with more people because it is a bigger major. However, as you move up in your studies, you do tend to be placed in smaller classes because as, as you move on to your like third and fourth year, the classes do get more specific and only specific students want to take those classes, meaning there will be less amount of students in those classes. If you are say like a nuclear engineering major, your classes are going to be quite small because you are in a smaller program. There's also like eye clickers and in-class interactions. Eye clickers are like a attendance tool and in-class interactions. I know when I was still at Berkeley, there um, in our big auditorium, Wheeler, Wheeler Auditorium, which most of my uh, engineering classes were, uh, professors will still pose a question and then a bunch of people will raise their hands and the prof professor will still pick on the people and have a conversation with them in this giant lecture hall talking about the 
talking about the lecture and it was it was a lot of in-class interaction actually it's pretty cool and even now during zoom professors still ask pose questions and students unmute themselves and talk to the professor and like answer the questions and stuff like that. There's also a lot of resources available here. There's a student learning center, also known as SLC, which provides a lot of tutoring and a lot of adjunct classes and just any help you really need. You go to them and they have help for you. There's also the engineering student services, which is similar to the SLC in certain ways. Engineering student services has tutoring also. And I go to the tutoring quite a lot. It is very helpful. They have students who've gotten like A pluses in the class and they help you figure out how the heck to debug your GitLib program <sighs> memories. But um, there's also four year academic advisors, which if you're in the College of Engineering, you actually get your academic advisor for all four years, which uh, say students in College of Learning and Sciences, which most of our undergraduate students are in, don't necessarily have that luxury. And I've known my, uh, academic advisor for some years now and she sends some quite interesting emails. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, but so now jumping into student diversity, there are a lot of student groups on campus and a lot of, just a lot of diversity. Uh, being at this giant school is just a huge pool of kids from all different walks of life. Um, uh, so some of the, just some of the clubs or some of the um, uh, groups you can be a part of. I know that Tina's in Society of Women Engineers, which I don't think is, yeah, I don't think it's on this list, but that's just one of them that's just, there's a pl plethora of clubs and plethora of um, groups you can be a part of. So again, like these five that are listed, one, two, three, yeah, five, they're listed here. There's plenty more. So Women in Science and Engineering theme program. So actually um, a theme program, really briefly, um, if you go listen to our normal general um, campus tour, which is going to be a 10 a.m., no, 10 a.m. tomorrow, I believe, check it out. Um, but there we'll talk about housing. And with housing, there are theme programs, theme programs for um, if you wanna, if you identify or if you wanna be a part of like-minded people, you can jump into a theme program. I know there's an African-American theme program, an environmentalist theme program, a Asian Pacific Islander theme program, LGBTQ. And then there's a women in science and engineering theme program. So if you are a woman in science or engineering, you can hop into that theme program. Um, for living in the dorms. And then we have the Black Engineering and Science Students Association, or BESA, um, Hispanic Engineers and Scientists, EOP, um, Equal Opportunity, I think Equal Opportunity Program, I think, I think that's what it stands for, and then in STEM, and then Pre-Engineering Program, um, PrEP, so a plethora of um, clubs and like different groups you can be a part of and join when you are here at Berkeley, and then all the lovely pictures. And on the bottom right, just a quick shout out to Kresge, that's Kresge Library, a lot of learning and a lot of studying goes there, great library, hype it up. Awesome. So, uh, more about this plethora. There are a lot of clubs and competitions. There are uh, competition scenes such as Cowsoul, the Cow Steel Bridge team, which Casey mentioned earlier about his Sibi friends. There's also the Berkeley Formula Racing, uh, FSAE. There's also the Biomedical Engineering Society. Here's the, so the Society of Women Engineers. So there's Cow Hacks, Pioneers in Engineering, and Department on Society. So, just to talk about a few, uh, Cowsoul is actually Berkeley students who make a solar powered car from basically scratch and it's pretty cool. I almost joined, I didn't because I didn't have enough time, but I think it's a really cool thing. Also, it gets to like an incredible, like, um, like it's crazy how fast it gets for being solar powered. I forgot what the mileage was, but it's crazy. Also, there's a Society of Women Engineers, which I'm a part of, and they have a lot of things there. They have professional help, they have academic help. I'm part of the SWE Next, um, Sweet Next Mentorship, which means I mentor a few high school students around the Bay Area, female identifying high school students who want to pursue STEM one day, and I just talk to them about how my studies have been going, what got me into STEM, and foster the love of STEM. Also, Department Honor Societies, I know HKN is like EECS Honor Society, which I'm not a part of because my GPA is not great enough, but that's besides the point. Um, they help me a lot with tutoring. Like they have some amazing tutors because those people have crazy GPAs. Like I cannot fathom how good their GPAs are and they know a lot of things and those things they teach me. So I am grateful for them. <laughs> Moving on. Great, and so now we can talk a little bit about the labs on campus. Um, so plenty of lab spaces. I know in chemistry there's a lot of labs, um, but we also have just the labs that are off, they're on and off campus for engineering. Um, for the Chaturja Dai Hall, they have Citrus. I believe Citrus stands for Center of, Center of Institute and Technology Research in the Interest of Society. Something like that. The way I describe it is they make things 
for society to help improve the world. And just, that's how I would say it. And um, they have a nice little um, museum. You can kind of walk around and see some of the some projects. One that I love is it has, it's a headphones, headphones, over the ear headphones with cat ears on top. And the reason being is that if you're listening to music and you want to share the music with others, they have my like, cat ears turned into speakers so you can like project the music out to your friends. And I just love that they made it into cat ears. They didn't have to make it into cat ears. They chose to make it into cat ears. So that's why I love it. So if, it, if the world ever opens up again, definitely go and check out Citrus. Um, and then they also, I believe Citrus or um, and Citrus Jedi, they also have a nano fabrication lab, meaning that there's like a certain amount of particles in the air or a certain lack of particles, I would say. So it's a very clean and very just, yeah, very clean lab. So just, I remember walking by and I see a bunch of people wearing like basically a hazmat suit to go into the lab. And I was like, that's weird. What, why is that? It's a nano fabrication. So, um, and then we have Jacobs Hall. Jacobs Hall has the Jacob, Jacobs Institute for Design and Innovation. I believe they also have um, some online training so you can go and get trained on how to use Jacobs Hall. I think they also, they have like machine shops and, or I think the only machine shop might be in Jacobs, might be next door to Ed, in Etcheberry. Um, but other than Jacobs, they also have 3D printing in Jacobs Hall. I took a class about 3D printing so in Jacobs, so that was pretty nice. And then we have Hesse Hall, which they have the machine shop. Oh, there's, that's where the machine shop is. The machine shop is in Hesse Hall for mechanical engineering. Like I said, building prototypes and whatnot. Um, Davis Hall, Davis Hall is the bottom left. And a cool thing about Davis Hall, is it's for civil engineering. And it, ha it has the largest construction bay in the Bay Area. That being that the entire first floor of, civil, of um, Davis Hall, doesn't exist the entire first floor its sole purpose is to support the second floor and the second floor is the construction bay and the entire second floor is the construction bay if you go in you can see like, like a glass like the entire top of it is lined with glass you kind of look into the construction bay um they have a giant just like arm or um, crane it's crazy cool and also pieces of the golden gate bridge and pieces of the bay bridge have been tested within davis hall so that's pretty cool if you ever drive over those bridges that part of them came or were tested in berkeley so that's pretty neat and then we have the richmond field station so berkeley is pretty big i mean re relatively pretty big but we also have some space out in richmond so you have like a nice little more open space out there i know on the, the formula racing team and like how soul or solar car they have, a, they have some space out there because they get to test the car around out there, um, but also plenty of other things going around in the Richmond Field Station. So there you are. Okay, cool. So on to a little research, we do have URAP, which is the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program that uh, if you've been on our, uh, our campus tour, probably talked a lot about, but basically you go online to the URAP website and you look through all their positions available for research and you apply to, I believe, up to three. And then if you're a good fit, the, uh, the researcher will contact you and you might actually be able to do some research here at Berkeley. And I know a few first year freshmen, their first semester, they've actually been able to participate through for research through this program. There's also Beehive, which is similar to URAP, but it is more focused on engineers. And it's, um, it's not just research, it's like product design, there's like creativity aspects and stuff like that. There's also the Berkeley Lawrence National Laboratory, which is up in the hills in Berkeley, and um, don't know too much about that, but they're always recruiting and a lot of people research there. There's also the Siddhartha Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology, which has a Collider Cup, there's an undergraduate and professional program slash research. I know the College of Engineering and the Hospital of Business, my two colleges, uh, <laughs> are very involved in this. <laughs> this uh, Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. Don't know too much about it, but if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A. Neat, and then to round up the rest of, of this M engineering program before we jump into the Q&A, we'll talk about some notable alumni. So here we have just four very famous alumni or just very like notable alumni. One of them is Rude Goldberg. And a cool thing about Rude Goldberg is he was an engineer from Berkeley, but he also helped make crazy complex machines. I don't know if I'm dating myself here, but my mom loved to watch this old movie called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And there's this, it's just, um, it's the Mary Poppins guy. I can't think of his name. Dick Van Dyke, that's the word. Dick Van Dyke, he just makes this, this crazy, amazing invention all to crack an egg. So that's basically what Rube Goldberg kind of like started, making these crazy complex machines all to like rip a piece of paper out of a notebook. So he's known for those craziness. And so it's kind of cool that this overcomplicated machinery he learned making that overcomplicated machinery at Berkeley, um, which I just thought was kind of cool. Um, then we have Dean Liu, Liu, Liu. Um, she's an instructor, researcher, and administrator um, before becoming the first female dean of the College of Chemistry, or oh my lord, College of Engineering. Sorry, I'm in my own mind over here. Um, then we have Shafi Goldwasser. She won the Turing Prize in Computer Science. I believe she's something with cooling um, a microchip, I, th I think. 
again, I have, I looked into it a while back and now it's kind of leaving me, but just very notable for computer science. Again, we have a great, I mean, computer science and electrical computer science program. So that's what she, that's one of, one of their alumni there. And also another one of the alumni from computer science that I know I can tell you a little bit about is Steve Wozniak. He, he is the co-founder of Apple. You probably knew that though, once you heard his name. So, but yeah, he also was a Berkeley graduate. And also um, some other um, fun legacy is 150 years of women in engineering. So we have been admitting women at Berkeley for 150 years. And a part, the very first class of women that were admitted, one of them was a well, uh, was in engineering. So it's kind of cool that the second we started admitting women, they're already in engineering and like, yeah, it's pretty neat for that. And now, there we go. Now you can ask us some of our Q&As. So we can go into the Q&A section. All right, awesome. Thank you both for that wonderful presentation. And we have a bunch of great questions that were asked. So thank you to everyone who has been asking them. The first one will be for Tina. And someone asked, can you double major? And how do you manage time in a double major? So yeah, if you're an engineering student, you can double major. Sometimes it is a little harder because engineers have pretty heavy course load. Um, I personally am part of the MET program, as I've mentioned before, and that does make double majoring a little easier. Although I do know quite a lot of students who didn't get into MET program or and are going to or are go or is right now planning to double major in electro engineering, computer science, and business administration, which is a heavy course load. You just basically plan a schedule, time management, and Google Calendar is your friend. I live my life on Google Calendar, and if you don't have Google Calendar set up, you should because it is amazing. So. All right, awesome, thank you for that. And then our next one will be um, for Casey. Someone asked, how many opportunities are there for engineering undergraduates to do research? How is research being conducted right now? Um, and are there remote research opportunities maybe that you know of? Yes, so great question. I don't know about any remote op um, researching opportunities at the current moment. You'd have to apply to URAP or Beehive or one of those lovely um, research um, uh, programs to find out about some of the remote ones. I just know that um, my one friend, he was doing research on Berkeley. I'm in Gilman Hall for chemistry. He's doing research and then over the course of this entire year, it has then moved to his house. So now he's actually um, doing all the research. They have all the data and he's just right, running through it on his computer at home. So you can continue still doing research at home if you already have the position. I don't know if you can get a position. I don't know, that's a little bit more of a gray area. Um, but there are definitely a lot of opportunities to do research here at Berkeley. Um, you can jump into I know my one, like I said, I had Eek's friend, Eek, Eek's, Eek's major roommates in my freshman year. Um, and I think the that spring semester, one of them actually went and got a research position that like his freshman year. So you can jump right into it or even fall semester, you can try, but you can jump right into research or you can even do research at the very at tail end of your time at Berkeley. My one friend got some research um, uh, for his some senior fall semester. So plenty of time to do research, plenty of opportunities to do it. Um, I get hop into URAP or to Beehive and Berkeley's position in the Bay is just really great because there's a lot of just tech startups or just a lot of just um, research opportunities being in the Bay area. Just so much going around that you can kind of hop into any one of them anytime and or even talk to your professors to say, hey, professor, any, any um, position open in your, in your lab I can come and join or anything like that. So there's plenty of opportunities, plethora. I love that word, plethora of opportunities. You just kind of had to jump out and apply to all of them and try to find them all. Awesome. All right, moving on to um, extracurriculars. So someone asked, this will be for Tina, someone asked, what are some popular ex engineering extracurriculars and how can I get a good balance of academic and social life at Berkeley? Okay, so there are a lot of engineering extracurriculars here at Berkeley. Uh, some that we mentioned on the slides, some as like the Berkeley Formula Racing Team, Council, uh, I know Codebase is a really big one. It's a consulting club that's uh, computer science focused, where you kind of like help businesses and other things with their technological problems. <laughs> There's also uh, Society of Women Engineers, a lot of the, the Society of Women Engineers is actually a really big one. I believe every single woman in engineering I know is in this club. So there's also other things such as space enterprise at berkeley which if you're interested in like aerospace you like get to learn how to shoot a rocket up really 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 high that's pretty cool um if you have any questions there's pretty sure you, there's um a lot of information online pretty sure you can google like stem uh clubs at berkeley a bunch of things will show up <laughs> um 
a good balance of academic and social life. One thing is that these engineering extracurriculars are really useful because you get to meet a lot of people who are also in your classes that can help you with your academic life but also helping you with your social life because they're your friends so i love that <laughs> and as i mentioned before there's google calendar and i love google calendar so 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 much awesome yeah kind of going off of that for casey is it difficult to manage course load with outside social commitments so maybe you could talk about this with your ex your major experience and you maybe your friends that you know yeah, I can only just reiterate exactly what Tina said um, with Google Calendar, but also just time management. So yeah, you can definitely, uh, it's definitely manageable to do both all, all of your classwork and homework, as well as like managing um, the social and um, what was the, what was the phrasing of it? Social commitments, that's the word. Um, so you can, there's, def there's definitely, um, a, a, you, there, it's definitely as possible to balance all of it, but it is all down to time management. I know as a freshman, I came in and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be able to like, just manage all of this on my own. Like I don't, I can just kind of like remember when my classes are and whatnot that didn't go too well now i use like a calendar and like google calendar and like oh, send me a, like a calendar invite so it's on my calendar so i know exactly what's going on when i wake up i have my alexa tell me what's going on for the day so yeah definitely all down to time management it is very possible um, for me just from, from personal experience with chemistry um and rally committee those are just two i'm gonna throw out um definitely is a lot is possible i mean, some of my friends in rally committee are chemistry majors and so what we would do is we would go to Moffitt, which is our 24 hour library when it was open. Um, you would go, we would go to Moffitt right after a night rally. We would go from all the doors all at night and then run over to Moffitt and study all night for chemistry. So it's definitely possible to manage all the social interactions and also our social commitments. And also everyone at Berkeley, they all know that you are here to get a great education. So even with all of these social commitments, you can still say, hey, I'm just a little bit behind the schoolwork. Can I just like, can someone take like for campus ambassador? Hey, I'm behind. Can someone give this tour for me? Oh yeah, I can give this tour. Like, you know, I'm here for you because everyone's really there just to help you out. So everyone's just very nice and very helpful. And managing the social commitments is definitely a lot is definitely possible, especially with some some of the great friends and people you meet here at Berkeley. Awesome. All right. I definitely second the, you know, planning your days out with Google Calendar for both of you. I, there was there's no way I could get everything done and remember everything otherwise. Uh, all right, moving on to our next one for Tina. Um, someone asked, what was your freshman experience like in the College of Engineering and how, do you, um, how did you make friends within your classes? Okay, great question. So College of Engineering, it is, I don't really know how to say it. There, I took a lot of, I took classes in the College of Engineering. They were hard classes. Although um, they were very, very, um, what's the word? Useful. Like I learned a lot. I learned so much that it was crazy. Um, College of Engineering itself actually has a lot of, a um, lot of resources or things that they do, such as we had this weird thing. It was called an e balls an engineer's ball. And it was in the Hurston Memorial Mining Building actually a, a few weeks before Corona hit. So it was like one of like my last memories at Berkeley. But it was in this beautiful, beautiful building. And they had this DJ and like macaroni and cheese and this Mario Kart like like in the other room they had like a Mario Kart like tournament and I was like this is how you know this is an engineer's ball when there's a dance and more people are playing Mario Kart than actually dancing but it was it was really pretty they had this great like backdrop for pictures and it uh it wasn't just for engineers it opened up to like anyone I remember my friend Carson who's also a campus ambassador shout out to Carson highly doubt she's watching this but she actually went to and she's a public health major and um just things like that there's the classes I was in had a lot of people. However, in our labs and discussions had very, had like maybe 20 people max or so. And a lot of these things are partners. I actually met this really good friend through my uh, CS, my computer science lab, and it was a partner lab. And I was like, I don't know anyone. I'm just a freshman. And then she like turned over to me. She's like, do you need a partner? And I was like, yes, 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 yes. And like, we talk on Facebook. And it's pretty cool. And so I met a friend through there. You just kind of have to put yourself out there. And if you don't put yourself out there, sometimes there are people who put themselves out there and see that you're like not that comfortable putting yourself out there. But I don't know. I think my freshman experience in College of Engineering has been interesting, but like not too different from the other people because I did live in a dorm with a bunch of people from College of Letters and Sciences and College of Chemistry and College of other stuff too so 
yeah gotcha yeah thank you for for that kind of um for for that perspective on making friends your freshman year and then we will move on to our next one for casey someone asked if you're a chemical engineer do you take classes in the college of engineering too Yes, yeah, so I can definitely preface that with, although I'm not a chemical engineer, my housemate and one of my best friends, Aiden, he is a chemical engineer. So he might have seen him answering some of the Q&A questions. So I'm also from my experience, but also from what I, my knowledge, but also from his experience, um, just letting you know that I do know a little bit about it. Um, but yeah, so you do take classes within the, you can, you can and do take classes within the College of Engineering as a chemical engineer. Both my College of Chemistry and College of Engineering are right next to each other, literally across the street. So when you go take classes, you kind of walk back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Even though I'm just a chemistry major, um, my inorganic chemistry class was held in the College of Chemistry or in the College of Engineering, excuse me. It's right, right across the street. So I'd go into the College of Engineering even to just take my inorganic chemistry classes. So you kind of walk back and forth. Um, and so you do take classes in the College of Engineering um, from Aiden. Again, speaking from Aiden, um, he took an engineering seven, which was a coding class. So again, you kind of learn how to code and also had a, he took a material science lab over in College of Engineering. So you kind of have to go back, you kind of do go again, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm, just, I'm kind of just repeating that over and over. Um, but you do get, but with um, a College of, en of Engineering and College of Chemistry being a chemical engineer, you do kind of get the freedom to take whatever elective you want within the College of Engineering. So you do do classes over there, but it's not like a specific class. You can kind of take a whatever you want, whatever you find interesting in the elective phase over there. Awesome. All right. And shout out to Aiden, chemical engineer. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our next one for Tina. Um, do you feel like there are many women in engineering at Berkeley as role models and other students? Okay. So I will say it depends on the major you're in. Uh, some majors have more female the males in their engineering majors actually. I believe bioengineering and IOR are the two that come to mind that have pretty similar like male to female ratios. Uh, EECS is not particularly one of them, <laughs> but um, there are a lot of resources such as Society of Women Engineers, which I know a lot of my engineering female friends from. And it's kind of like this group, like it's one of those things where you like meet someone and then you ask them their major and I actually met my best friend at Berkeley. She, uh, I met her during like the first week and I was like, oh, what's your major? She's like nuclear engineering. I was like, I'm an electrical engineer and computer science major. She's like, yo, women in engineering. And it's just kind of this cool bond. Cause you know, there, there aren't too many of us in the world. And um, so yeah, <laughs> where was I going with this? Oh, also role models. Uh, one thing, even though I haven't met her personally, Dean Liu, the first female Dean of the College of Engineering, I think, is a role model because I see her all around. I see her on posters. I remember walking in our little engineering, like the College of Engineering section of Berkeley one day and I looked up and it was since it's the 150 year of women in Berkeley, looked up and there was this giant poster that had Dean Liu on it and 150 years of women. And I was just like, this is amazing. I can't believe I'm a part of this. So I would say she's definitely a role model. Awesome, yeah, thank you for that. All right, and we're getting through these questions one by one. Thank you both for sticking with me. The next one is for KC, um, and it'll, uh, someone asks, what is your biggest piece of advice for potential engineering students, and what's something you wish you would have known? Um, so I, for, this is both for um, potential engineering students, but also for students in general applying to Berkeley. I say my biggest piece of advice is love what you do and really be into um, education, uh, education, just by kind of being into like learning, but also kind of be a little bit um, well-rounded, I would say is the word. Um, I, I always, I love using this one little story. My best or one of my best friends or more of like friends, you know, acquaintance, whatever, Timothy. Timothy, back in high school, he was one of the smartest guys I've ever known in the world, but all he did was kind of like play clarinet on the side, and but really smart. And for me, I wasn't the smartest. I was like, you know, B plus average, whatever. Um, but I would do cross country, student um, student government or student council, um, play an instrument, um, tuba. But so just I had all these like other things that I was working on. And when we went came went to applying to schools, I got into all of my or some of my colleges. He only got into one of his. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Timothy. But like I would say, be a little bit well rounded because especially here at Berkeley, like they kind of have like the holistic view. They take a holistic view, like making sure you are you aren't just really great in the classroom. You are kind of like, good elsewhere. That's my like, one piece of advice for all students, not just engineering in general, but everyone's kind of like be well-rounded. I know like everyone is, everyone's being well-rounded these days, but also just, you know, 
be well rounded, but also being well well rounded in things that you love. So don't just go out and join student government just because you want to get into a good college. Go out and join a club that you want to do because you actually enjoy doing it. My friends would do Red Cross or student government or any, any sport at all, or they would even do some um, a model UN. That's another perfect one. So just be open to doing other things like volunteering and whatnot. So that's my one piece of advice for all of that. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely great advice to get involved kind of um, in a bunch of different things and you'll and you'll end up figuring out what you're most passionate about too. Um, all right, moving on to our next question for Tina. Um, someone asked, what would be the one thing that students would say sets your engineering program apart from others in the country? It's a great question. Uh, um, I briefly mentioned this, but the amount of things you learn just within your first year is kind of crazy, at least for me for uh, electrical engineering and computer science. In my first year, I have made a voice controlled car from scratch. I have reverse engineered Git, uh, the whole Git like hub system, like the file control system on your computer. It's just crazy the amount of things you learn. I will say it is hard. It's not easy by any chance. Some people think it's easy. I think it's hard, but it depends on your background and stuff like that. But the amount of stuff I've learned is crazy. I have some friends who are other like computer science and uh, electrical engineering majors at other colleges and they and we talked at the end of the year and they're like, oh, we learned Python and this and that. And I was like, I finished Python within like my first five weeks here at Cal. I know like I came in knowing one very minuscule, like very little robot C coding language, which is used literally nowhere except for like this one thing I did in high school. And now I know like five really well known like com computer programming languages. I know a lot more about circuits. I know how to build a car kind of. It's just the amount of things you learn here at Berkeley is <laughs> ridiculous, especially in my first year. So I would say that's what sets us apart. Also, we have some amazing faculty. Uh, my intro to computer science course was taught by um, a person or the person who was on the team who created Google Translate. And also my other computer science teacher had been studying computer science for so long that when he started studying computer science, there were like two languages, one of them, which is not even a thing anymore. He was there for the formation of Java and Python and C and all these things that we code with now. So it's kind of crazy. That's about it. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that. And then we will move on to our next question for Casey. Someone asked, how many hours of sleep do you get? This is an awesome question because it fluctuates throughout the year, beginning of the school year, seven, eight hours of sleep. Perfect. Middle of the school year. What? And then first finals, I stay up. But no, um, honestly, I would say that um, on a regular school year, I do get like about six, seven hours, six, seven, eight hours of sleep on a regular day. There are all those days where, you know, I procrastinated a little bit too much and I stay up at night and mop it until 3 a.m. studying. Um, but those are very rare and far in between. Like, and also, um, what's the way I would say it is, it's, yeah, it's, all, it's all down to how, to how you handle um, doing your schoolwork and classwork. Personally, I like staying up really late and doing my classwork because during the day I get distracted and I don't get anything done during the day. So I can stay up a little bit later to get my classwork. And I kind of like, I run a little bit better on just like um, five, six, seven hours of sleep instead of like the full eight, nine, whatever. But so yeah, so I, only, I get a little bit less sleep than others, but I know that my boyfriend actually, he gets a lot of sleep. Love you, Eric, but he, he, he finds a lot of time to sleep. So um, it all is also dependent on the students. But I will say that for me, at least, I do get a little, slightly less than like the recommended amount, but that's what I've been doing ever since high school. So it works well for me. Awesome. All right. And then moving on to our next one for Tina. This will be our second to last question. Someone asked, um, what's a day in the life of an engineer at Berkeley? Okay, so um, I would say it's very similar to regular students at Berkeley. I wake up, I get ready, I go to classes, and then I come home and I do homework and then I hang out with my friends. That's about it. Um, I don't know. I guess I hang out with more engineer, like engineering people than a typical person does. But I mean, Casey's not in the College of Engineering. He has a lot of engineering friends. So uh, I say it's pretty similar. And um, one thing I have heard, I've heard before I came to Berkeley was like, college of engineering here is so hard, it's so competitive, but it's, it's 
not as bad as they make it seem. It's really not that bad. You just have to be on top of your things and just really love it. Awesome. All right. And moving into our last question for both of you. Um, so that will basically just be your Berkeley story. Um, why Berkeley? What drew you here? And what has kept you here? Um, and what do you like about Berkeley? So Casey, you could start. Yes, yeah, so I love this question. Um, and I'll kind of just give you a brief backstory of my life before I came to Berkeley. I have a twin sister. I live in Los Angeles, Long Beach. And I have a twin sister. And my entire life, whatever I would do, she would always do slightly better than me. I was in student council and then she became secretary. And I was like, okay, I'll become secretary. And then she became vice president. I was like, oh my God. Or I would get an A, she'd get an A plus. I'd get a B minus, she'd get a B. Like no matter what we did, she was always that much better than me. And so when I applied to my colleges, um, all, within, all within in state um, and she got into UCLA and I was waitlisted at Berkeley. And I was really sad because again, she had just edged me out. But then I got off the waitlist at Berkeley and I came to Berkeley and I just loved it so much. Not only are we number one public university, while well, UCLA is number two, making sure all of y'all know that. Um, but I came here and just, it was just so great. All the spirit on campus, maybe I'm a little bit biased again, go Rallycom. But um, loved all the spirit on campus and all just the fun things that go on here, um, as well as just having such a, um, it's just, a, everyone here is just so smart and everyone here, I mean, I, again, use this lovingly. Everyone here is a nerd and I love it. Everyone's a nerd for something. I mean, I love Pokemon and I was like, oh, no one's here going to like Pokemon. Everyone's like, oh, I love Pokemon too. There's a whole class about it. I'm like, oh my God, I'll take that class. So yeah, everyone just here is very spirited and just, they all love what they do, whether again, it's Pokemon or fighting for the environment or social justice or their classes. Everyone here is just very smart and very loving and very spirited. Um, and that's also like my one piece of advice to all of you is that no matter what college you go to, every college is going to be smart in their own respect, but get involved in the spirit because the spirit is really what makes the, that college your college. And so that's what, again, I got involved in Rallycom, um, Blue and Gold, Bonfire Rally. This is also, I saw, saw questions like, what's your favorite tradition? I didn't, we didn't get this answer, but I'm going to answer right here without Sarah knowing, she's not there. Um, but um, it's just like, what's your favorite tradition? One of mine is the bonfire rally. We have this giant bonfire within our Greek theater leading up to the big game against Stanford. We just have this huge bonfire and we, you know, loving, loving, great. Look up big game. If you go look up big game, it goes to our big game because we're that old and that important. But yeah, so get involved in the spirit because it really makes a college your college. And that's my Berkeley story and how I ended up here in Berkeley. Love the spirit. Awesome. All right. Thank you for that. Great tradition also. And Tina, what about you? Okay, awesome. So um, I come from a small suburb of LA. I come from a, a smaller high school. And when I was applying to colleges, I thought I wanted something similar like my high school experience, and my college experience. So I applied to mainly smaller schools. And but I applied to Berkeley because everyone knows Berkeley is awesome, right? So I applied to Berkeley. I get into Berkeley and I'm like, do I really want to go to Berkeley? <laughs> but then I visit Berkeley on Cal Day, which is our open house that unfortunately couldn't happen this year. But I went to Berkeley and I just saw like so many crazy things. There were like giant robots like out in the quad. There were like people dancing and like they had beautiful like beautiful outfits and just like the people would talk about their passion and like how Casey talks. Like a lot of people at Berkeley are just like Casey and that's exactly what I saw when I went to Berkeley for Cal Day. Just the people with spirit and the like passion they have for whatever they're interested in like social justice or engineering or like I don't know whatever you're interested in you can find it here at Berkeley. But at that moment I knew that even though Berkeley wasn't where I thought I was going to end up it's where I needed to be because I wanted that type of passion. I wanted to be one of these people. I want to change the world like how they're going to one day so that's why I picked Berkeley. Awesome well thank you for that and thank you both for your presentation and wonderful words of wisdom. I'm sure um, all of our attendees could find something to relate to during that and with that I wanted to leave all of our attendees everyone watching with some ways that you can contact us. So first and foremost feel free to follow us on social media at visit UC Berkeley on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can keep up to date with um, you know everything that we're putting out via those handles. You can also email tour at berkeley.edu with um, any additional questions that you have. If you sent something in and it didn't get answered today we are more than happy to answer that question for you via email. Um, we also have a bear talk blog where ambassadors get to blog about any anything they want to, um, you know, their favorite memories, favorite experiences. So check that out directly from us. 
And then this session was recorded, but there's actually a different engineering virtual visit available on our YouTube channel at Busy UC Berkeley. So check that out if you want to rewatch some of this um, dense information. And then also, I would encourage you to look at some of the events or some of the celebrations that we have going on that are celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley and the legacy that women have left at Berkeley and how we've made it kind of what it is today. And then also look at our chancellor's message about standing together during these exceptionally difficult times, as well as COVID-19 resources and kind of updates in terms of what we're doing for the fall. And then if you wanna learn more about specifically engineering, you can visit the College of Engineering website at engineering.berkeley.edu. So with that, thank you all for joining us and we will send you off with a Go Bears on three. So one, two, three, Go Bears. Go Bears. Thank you everyone, have a great day.